half. I've just been squeezing this in, of course, between other events. Last night I was downtown painting in Raleigh and uh, it was way too windy. I did a very, very brief uh, episode just to let you know what I was doing. One of the decisions is I've decided to do the illustrations on graphics paper, marker paper, because, or another word for it almost, is tracing paper, just a little bit high quality tracing paper. So I bought a couple pads of that and I've decided to do the illustrations with these markers whatever they're called I don't even I don't even know accurate professional waterproof I know you can't read that professional waterproof technical pen accurate A C U R I T <laughs> one of those you know awful misspelled words made into a trademark um, and I've I'm not going to use a technical pen first of all because I'm going to do a lot of illustrations and I'm really liking the the um, interaction between these pens let me try out here I got I bought several of these just today here is this the finest one which means of course it'll be the first one to wear out if any of them do or to you know to go bad so yep that's pretty good that's the finest one and the the boldest one I have is an O2 and again forgive me I know you can hardly even see this but okay Anyway, it turns out, and, and it dries really quickly. That's nice. Anyway, let me show you real quickly some of the sketches that I've been doing in the in the last couple of days. A lot of them, not these. These are off the internet. Let me pull up what I was looking for here. I The last thing I did was uh, girl, G-I-R-L, um, gymnastics. and then hit images let's let's see what i get yeah because i was i mean some of those are crazy i don't want girls doing splits what i'm finding i need more than anything else i could there's thousands of uh images of little girls faces and i certainly want to be good at the face i'm sorry i can't see what i'm doing I'm so sorry but um what i'm discovering is that i, I can't find many of uh, physiques a uh, whole figure to, because I, I need to be able to do the whole figure so again what am i doing none of these drawings will be used in the book this is all just me training myself building up my internal reference file so hopefully when the time comes i can draw these girls pretty much if not entirely out of my head so i'm i'm, I'm doing a lot of work just to help me remember what do little girls look like so can you even see this this is from images that i had on my computer just a few minutes ago i'm starting all of my images with this nice big fat lead holder and then after i've gotten them i'll do a little bit more and then I've, after i've gotten all the major lines where i want them then i turn my grip around to the control grip to do details and shading and uh, I pretty strongly recommend that you do a similar kind of thing I've talked several times already about why so I will not repeat myself here and now I'm sure I'll come back to it again um, so there's three girls more or less whole figure uh, on this page, I, I found a couple girls. I looked for girls' swimsuits. So that, that was good because it helped me uh, find, again, some physique. So as you can tell, I spent quite a bit more time on these. I just, I, you know, I, I feel like in a lot of these things, when I see them, I go, oh, man, that's right. I Like I've forgotten. <laughs> I don't want to sound rude, but... I've forgotten more than most people ever learn, most artists ever learn about anatomy, <laughs> unfortunately. Like, uh, one of the ways to analyze a, a, a straight knee is to consider it a double V. I don't know if you know that or not. That's one of the little mnemonic devices that when you're, when you're drawing a knee. Um, uh, and then it gets more complicated. Here's the muscle, muscle bulge above that. Here's the top of the patella. Here, the patella is actually here, the knee, knee bone. Is actually there but in the drawing often you get this 
double V shape. And that's exactly what we see here in this little girl's leg. Now, I wasn't drawing this out of my head. I was drawing it by looking at the screen and looking at the photograph went, oh, that's right. And you, there's that double V and so on. Um, so there's a, a pair of legs <laughs> again. And then I spent even more time doing a full figure of a girl. I would guess this model is here is about hmm, eight years old, maybe. So just a little bit older than the, the six-year-old start. Maybe, maybe, yeah, eight, maybe nine. So that's good. And again, I'm just like, oh, is that, you know, d does a little girl have any definition in her abdomen at all? Well, evidently, because the, the one I was looking at did. Um, you know, what happens when a girl holds her hand this way on her, on her hip? What the, this little double, um, double crease there. It's like, oh, that, that, I would not have done that in my head. I would have made a single crease. See, things like that. So I'm just re-educating myself about what anatomy. Here's some drawings, real quick, loose drawings of my granddaughter, Lake. I just, I've been taking pictures of her. She, I took her into the living room and said, okay, climb over this, the arm of the couch. And she did that and sitting and standing and so on and so forth. Here's my granddaughter again. Um, I quite like the these drawings, especially when they're in the loose stage. They they have a real charm about them. Okay, so let me invite you to look over my shoulder just for a minute or two here. Hello, Heather. Good to hear from you. Here are uh, a bunch. Oh, oh, my computer's starting to act up. Come on, don't do this. Uh, let's see if I've got any good anatomy. Um... without getting too ridiculously gymnastic-ish. Okay, so let me click on that one. It's gonna work. <laughs> oh, wouldn't you know. I'm going to quit uh, Firefox. Let me go into um, Chrome and see if Chrome behaves any better. So while, uh, while I am waiting for that to come up then, I'm gonna go back to the first sketch and I have found it is helpful to put a piece of card underneath. Otherwise, uh, my drawing produces dents, creases in the pages underneath. So I'm finding this helpful. Chrome still coming up, right? No, isn't that crazy, right? When I bring you guys, this is a very old computer. The oldest one I have in the house. And right when I bring you in to do something with it, it freezes. <laughs> so let me start restart my computer and restart my music there that was playing. You probably couldn't hear that. And let's just do some some drawing. Um, while I'm drawing, let me talk for just a few minutes. It, it dawns on me as I'm doing all of this work. It's like, huh. You know, back in the day when I was a full-time illustrator... And that was basically, well, from age 18 to age 42, on and off, on and off, on and off. But the most intense season was from age 30, 34 to 42, I guess. Um, and when I was a freelance illustrator, I didn't do this kind of thing very often. I didn't do studies. And I got to thinking about, oh, why, what, why is that? What was I doing back in those days? Well, here's the way I worked. And in fact, the way most illustrators work is I would either take my camera and, and uh, take a picture of a model, which I did many times. Uh, you know, sometimes it was old people, sometimes it was young people, sometimes it was myself, sometimes it was my wife, uh, sometimes it was the neighbor kids, and I would shoot a whole bunch of pictures of them, and then basically copy or trace the photographs of the model. And in doing so, I was a perfectly typical illustrator 
In fact, one of my, two of my favorite illustrators, Drew Struzan, probably the most famous movie poster artist in our generation. I, I don't mean my age. I, I, he is my age. But that's not, I mean living in the world today. Uh, Drew, D-R-E-W, Struzan. Look him up. Spelled just the way it sounds. Um, virtually all of his work The Rule of Nines. That sounds good, Heather. Wow. Virtually all of Drew's work is traced. And if there are a lot of YouTube videos of, of Drew online where, in a way, he sort of defends himself. He sort of has to defend himself <laughs> against his detractors who say, Hey, that's cheating. <laughs> do, do you recognize that tone of voice? You shouldn't have to cheat. And, of course, he, he being the best illustrator and one of the best illustrators in the country, and he has the, you know, the ability to be kind of snobby about it and say, the question is, the final product is, is it good? If it's a good final product, I don't care how I get there. That That's kind of a, a paraphrase of... Drew Struzan. Then I mentioned one of my my other favorite illustrators, who I know knew, knew still know, but he's left town now, is another Drew, D-R-U this time, Drew Blair, B-L-A-I-R, Drew Blair, the, for want of a better description, the best airbrush illustrator in the world. Uh, for many years, he lived here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I had the chance to kind of study with him, look over his shoulder do some work. He was gracious enough to let me pretend I was doing work with him. He was just being nice to me, but I appreciated it anyway. Anyway, and likewise, he also uh, relies very heavily on tracing. Um, now, one of the answers, just for what it's worth, to, to the detractors who say, hey, cheating, you're tracing, then you can, as an artist, as a snobby illustrator, you can hand all your tools over to your detractor and say, okay, you do it. <laughs> and real quickly, the, the detractor will go, is it, upon trying to do what the illustrator is doing, will discover, oh, it's not that easy. Just because the, art, the illustrator is projecting and tracing and so forth, uh, there's still plenty of room for mistakes and plenty of room for, you know, making it look good. Alan Lee. Is, Toby, is Alan Lee... I know there's a, is he the uh, um, Lord of the Rings guy? The guy that did comps for the movies? I think he is, right? Have I got the name right? Yeah, I like his stuff. And when I watch the movies about the, the making of Lord of the Rings, um, all of it looks like fun to me, but the most fun, fun of all to me is, is the comp artist. I think that's Alan Lee. It's like, oh man, if I had another time for another life, you know, that's what I'd like would have liked to do. Okay, good. I have I have uh, my computer is back up. Let's try this again. I'm in um, Chrome this time. Okay, girl, girls. I'll make it G I M N A S T I C S. I'm a terrible typist, by the way. <laughs> um. So the question being, in the old days as an illustrator, I didn't do this. Why am I doing it now? And I, uh, I, I well, it's because I'm a more mature artist. That's that's the real reason. Because I'm a better artist than I was back in the day when I was an illustrator. And I really want to not only be better but get better. So I am sorry, I'm not seeing some of the images I saw earlier. Let me let me change this the settings to all I want is large images. Let's see if that cuts out some of the oh it just got worse instead of better. So I'm a more mature artist, I'm a better artist. I this time around I do not want to just trace images. I want to do it like 
quote unquote, like a real artist. <laughs> I guess, I guess my prejudice is showing through right there when I call that, when I say real artist, I mean, like Rembrandt, you know, not tracing or projecting, even though many of the old masters did trace and project many of them, except for Rembrandt, by the way, we've talked about that before. That's David Hawking's book. Um, let's see how big this is. Here's a, here's a cute, unusual pose, copy image. Oh, and then I have, it's Photoshop open. Yeah. Sometimes I'll then drop the image into Photoshop. That's what I'm going to do now. So I have a little bit more control. There we go. So there it is. And, and sometimes I'll, of course, I'll print off these, these uh, images um, and work from paper, but sometimes I'll work from a computer, sometimes I'll just work straight from my phone screen. I can see right now that keeping these pages in this is not going to work, so let's take those out and let's do some more drawing while well, I'll, I'll jabber for just a little while 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 I draw um I guess I'll try to make it so you can see both images at the same time here's a couple things I would like to say to you budding artists as you watch me draw spectacular entertainment <laughs> watching me draw um, nothing wrong with cheating. Cheating is legal. I've said that before. I say it again. Many of the greats did it. I just named two of the greatest illustrators in America today. And, um, many of the old greats in the, in the Middle Ages and the Renaissance also cheated David Hockney has made made his thesis virtually unassailable in spite of the complaints of some art snobs who hated to hear that their heroes cheated. So it's all legal. And again, I've, re I've said this so many times, I hate to repeat you too much, but even though it's legal, every time you cheat, your brain shrinks. Of course, I'm being picturesque, I'm being silly, but your skills deteriorate. So rather than using this job that I have right here, this illustration job, as an occasion for making my skills deteriorate. I said, no, no, let's make it an occasion for my skills increasing. So I'm learning a whole bunch about how, what little, what girls look like. Now this model right here, she looks to me like she's 11 you know, 10, 11, 12 in there somewhere. And she's got really funky clothes on and it's pretty hard to to ignore the clothing. So I'm gonna just go ahead and make it part of the illustration. Um, the other thing I want to say is what I'm doing right now, looking and drawing is some of the hardest, um, somebody called it brain ups. Um, somebody else called it neurobics, neuro aerobics. Some of the hardest mental work that your brain can do is this right here, copying, just looking and copying. So if you want to give your brain a workout, whether you're an artist or not, if you just want to give your brain a workout, just start copying stuff. And it is for that very same reason. It's because it's such a hard workout that uh, many artists take the lazy way out and draw out of their head, which is not hard work. I'm gonna not gonna make, you see, can you see this? This photograph, the girl's hair is going straight up. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make my hair coming coming down. Uh, one of the f favorite scenes of this in this book, by the way, is this girl uh, climbing trees. So um, here's another another good shot of some legs. Um, 
and the girl in the book, she's a mountain girl, backwoods country girl. Um, she spends the first several years of her life um, wearing essentially nothing but her big brother's t-shirts, which you know would come down to her calf, which were like dresses on her. Um, so um, I really, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be drawing some bare legs. So I am, as you saw earlier, I, I did some pretty, some pretty serious studies of legs. Of course, those are straight legs, looking more or less on from the front. I, I, if I'm going to do legs, I need to do the legs from the side, from the back, from every other angle. Now, let me talk. Let's talk about anatomy just a little bit. Um, it's one thing to sit here as I am doing now. By the way, yes, it'd be more fun, if you will, to draw from a live model. That's why, you know, serious art schools typically are drawing more. Well, first they draw from plaster casts and then they draw from live models. Um, the reason that's more fun and more challenging is when you're drawing from a live model, your brain is having to convert the image from a three-dimensional shape to a two-dimensional shape. When you're copying from a photograph, the camera has already done the work of flattening it out. So, in a way, you could even call this cheating <laughs> that I'm drawing from a photograph. But as, as you know, um, getting a child to hold still long enough for any kind of uh, pose, you know, unless they're sleeping. I think that's why in the in ancient times we see a lot of paintings of children sleeping. <laughs> I'm not sure that's true, but it just seems seems like it, it might be true. Um, let me let me talk about about anatomy for just a minute because I've already uh, uh, felt this, observed this, sensed this uh, in the last hour or so while I've been doing, for instance, these drawings. It is this. It's one thing, and let me, just for fun, I'm going to blow her, these legs up quite large so that hopefully you can see them as well. Let's, let's pick, um, okay, let's pick this knee right here, for instance. Okay, now, let me talk about this knee. Hang on a second, I'll, I'll, make, I'll point this at you. So you can see it just a little bit better, right? Now we've now we've lost the knee. Hang on. Okay, it's one thing for us to perceive and see, analyzing carefully all the undulations of this line. Like here's an I'm going to call this an external curve and an internal curve. Okay, so can you follow me? Here's what our eyes are going to be seeing. Of course, at this size, it's real much easier. External curve, internal curve, external curve, inside curve, outside, inside, outside, inside. So according to my count, one, two, three, four outside curves, one, two, three, four inside curves. The beginning going Same thing here. One straight curve, if you follow my gist, straight curve, straight curve, ooh, and then the ever so slow. You guys can't even see this, and I think if I blow it up, that is crazy. Okay, there, there is, but you understand the kind of thing I'm looking at. First, here's a bulge right here. Then it flattens out. It's such a subtle in curve right there. Most people wouldn't even catch it. Okay, here's what I want to talk about. It's one thing as a just a visually sensitive, uh, you know, seeking a high degree of visual... Um, Acuity, can I use that word? It's one thing to see these shapes. Most beginners, most young artists would miss. In fact, they would miss, and you can't see it. There's a slight in, uh, in curve right here. One, two, three, four. Most young artists wouldn't even see that. But here's what I really want to say. If you have some idea about the musculature that is happening inside this leg, then you're much more likely to see the subtle shifts. And, and here's where my own knowledge of anatomy 
gets a little sketchy because in order to catch this, yeah, you'd have to have the anatomical understanding, and some artists do, of a physical therapist or a doctor or a physician's assistant or something, some kind of very highly scientific to know that this curve right here is one muscle. Now, it, it, let me let me give you some peace of mind. So you can spend hundreds of hours learning every single muscle, where it goes, what shape it is. And, and, I, and by muscle, I just mean muscle. I mean tendon, ligament, and so forth. But most of the time, we don't have to do that. Because most of the time, when we see a photograph like this, and again, I don't expect you to even see this on your screen, but it's obvious to me that this is one muscle mass basically coming down here in front of this one. And this, even though I don't know the name of it, even though I don't know the name of that muscle, as soon as I see it, I go, oh, I identify with it in my body. In other words, I can put my hand on the, on the comparable ligament on the side of my leg. I go, ah, it's that right there. I don't know what it is. It's a ligament that goes down the side and stops right here at the knee. And most of the time, I think that's the way most of us artists work. Very few, some, and I wish I had an extra life, you know, to, time to, uh, to learn all, all this stuff. Again, one of, the, one, of the, the, one of the artists on that teaches online that I enjoy so much is this guy named Proko, P-R-O-K-O. -O. Look him up, tell him Dan Nelson sent you. He doesn't know me. Um, young guy, he, he does quite a bit of anatomical work like this. And he's very entertaining and, and very high production quality and so forth. Anyway, the point I want to make is that in order to draw things accurately, you really need to, first of all, pay attention to details. So, and identify if not learn all the anatomy if not spend the hundreds of hours and i've tried you know i've tried to learn a fair amount over the years and i refresh myself like i'm doing right now i'm refreshing my anatomical knowledge um not only do you need to just be able to see the curve you need to have some or i shouldn't say need it's good to have some understanding about what's happening under the skin so that you can accurately represent the anatomy. Now, when I'm drawing something like this, <laughs> ilioti il iliotibial iliotibial band. Good Heather, that sounds right. I would. I've heard that word before, maybe twice in my life, and that sounds very good. There are some other things that are working in my mind um, as I do this work. Let me let me. Uh, expand out for just a second and I've showed you this before but I want to show it to you again I have probably uh, 20 or 30 anatomy books um, downstairs in my main studio I'm just going to grab a, a couple of them for you here Uh, this is drawing drawing the living figure by Joseph Shepherd. Um, okay, so this kind of stuff. Are you are you so? Have I I haven't drawn this particular drawing, but have I drawn skeletons? Oh, yes, I've drawn skeletons. Have I drawn this muscle? Not this one, but have I drawn these muscles? Yes, I've drawn these muscles, and so on and so on and so on and so forth. So that while I'm drawing this little girl, I do have by no means an exhaustive, by no means adequate anatomical background. I just, I haven't, you know. And by the way, uh, let me repeat for you students, looking at these images increases your knowledge, I would guess, about seven <laughs> percent i just pulled that number out of the air what really increases your skill is drawing copying these images again hard work hard mental work but that increases your knowledge about 87 percent, maybe 97 are you with me so that's one book um here's another one. Oh, same guy 
different book. I didn't realize it was the same guy. Different book. Again, muscles, bones, have I drawn? Yes, yes, yes. I could show you downstairs. Um, in fact, I may have copied. Uh, I have a number of bone drawings very much like this. And again, the point of doing that is just to beat into your head. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that when, then when the day comes, you have to draw a leg. You've got background. Now, let me show you a couple of the books that I have studied. These are my two favorites. Uh, one is Drawing the Head and Figure by Jack Ham. He worked in the 1960s, and he's, I've heard some other very good artists rave about him. The, the thing about, well, two things. One is you have to get over this feeling that it's old-fashioned. Yes, it is old-fashioned. 1960s style of hair and makeup and faces. You just get over it. Get over it, get over it. The reason Jack Ham is brilliant is he is the one who helps you the most with mnemonic devices, remembering stuff. So here's how many different kinds of noses he's drawn, and he and he talks about the differences. He gives you little tricks to remember. Look at look at his analysis of the ear. So uh, if if you could only buy one book to help you with anatomy, this is the book I would recommend. And one of these days, I'm going to draw every single drawing in this book. I have not done that. I've drawn several of them, many of them, but not every one. So that's a task yet ahead of me. Uh, but mnemonic device, memory trick, memory trick, memory trick, which everybody needs because the amount of information on the human anatomy is so astronomical, you just have to come up with some way to remember it. Um, here's a funny one. I mean, it, it, again, we have, we have two bones that we saw them there in, in the lower part of our arm, right? One is called the radius, and one is called the ulna. And up here is the humerus. And you start by you know, at least knowing that there's two here, one here, knowing how they kind of connect and how they this, these two twist. And just a silly little device. I always remember radius and ulna because ulna, under, under ulna, U, U, ulna. And radius gets radiated by the sun. Silly, but it works. So I always remember radius ulna humerus because we hit our funny bone and it's not funny. That's the humerus. That's why I called the funny bone. Um, and then the third book that I wanted to brag on in particular is uh, usually I show you the green one. This is George Bridgman, Constructive Anatomy, 1920s. And if there was a second book that I was going to that I would recommend for you budding anatomical artists, it would be this one. What Bridgman does, besides, and it's not just the drawings, it's his verbiage, it's his descriptions are help you understand what he's doing with the drawings. Uh, Bridgman's, and he taught at the Art Student League of New York, again, in the 1920s, and is still revered by many as perhaps the best anatomical teacher ever to come out of the Art Student League of New York. Um, and um, what what he does... I'm trying to find a good example, is he overangulates all of his anatomy. He, In fact, in some, in, a, in the other book, he compares it to pieces of furniture. I'll just go back to the hand. So you see this, this analysis of the arm here? What he's done, he takes all the angles and sharpens them just a little bit so that you can see them. And then after seeing them, it's a very easy thing to round to round them off. He, I remember the day years ago that, that I learned how to draw a foot from the side. And the reason was, let me see if there's a foot in here. The reason was because he, here's some foot feet back here. He took the foot and over-exaggerated the angularity of the heel. And yep, here's one example. It's not a great one. But can you see this right here? He makes it, he sticks out, then makes it this square. Boom. So for years, I've used that little trick to draw feet from the side. Now, there's all kinds of other angles and so forth. Uh, but exaggerate that, 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 here's some, some more. Anyway, he overangulate. So this would be my number two recommendation, by the way. And uh, I just want to say, so all of that is helping me while I am, in this case, trying to draw back to, back to this one girl's leg. So unlike some of you students 
who all you have to go by, perhaps, is looking at this illustration, I mean, at this photograph, and then as you're looking, you'll recognize your own anatomy. You go, oh yeah, that's right, I have a bulge right there. <laughs> Does that make sense? And uh, I strongly recommend this sense of uh, identification, that you, you feel like you can identify with your own body uh, what's going on there. So that's all I'm going to do today. Uh, I'm talking about the differences, some of the differences between fine art and illustration and illustrator. This doesn't have to be this way, but it's pretty typical. An illustrator just copies, traces, projects, gets the job done. Um, you know, by doing, by me doing this, I'm getting paid, with every hour, I'm getting paid less and less and less per hour on this job. That makes sense? So it's a bit of a trade-off. I can either... Uh, get paid more per hour and just trace. But then, of course, I have to go to the bother of taking photographs for every single illustration I'm going to do. So maybe doing it this way will actually save me time in the long run. Mm -hmm. Then my rate per hour goes up. <laughs> I hope that's any turning. turning. <laughs> Thanks, Heather. I love that comment. <laughs> oh, my gosh, I got a bump. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> Anyway, I think for some reason, um, maybe it's because anatomy is not my full-time job, but for me, it's just fun. I just, it's, it's, it's it, mental ac exercise. It's hard work drawing what you're copying, but doggone, the human body, what better thing to draw? By the way, that's what I just, I'll, I'll leave in comment. When, whenever I'm teaching an art class, uh, I always, the, the, the students, I always say to them, you're going to draw me. Thankfully, I'm keeping my clothes on, <laughs> which always brings a chuckle. Um, but the, And I tr keep trying to say to them, why are you drawing me? And, and I'm saying to them, it's because the human anatomy is the hardest thing to draw. So if you can draw me, you can draw the proverbial apple, you know, like the drawing class, apple with a light and an arrow coming, you know, that stupid, I'm sorry, that stupid stuff. Um, so uh, I say this to my young students all the time, practice human anatomy and especially especially human face because if you can draw a human face drawing an old tobacco barn is a piece of cake okay it's been fun that's it for today um i don't know if i'll broadcast tomorrow or not. tomorrow or not remains to be seen but thank you for your company if you enjoy my company then please subscribe and tell your artist friends tell all your artist friends to join you okay thanks bye